Hello, this is James with 104th Voice Squad. Welcome back to Seduce Me. I am, uh, this is part three of the Let's Play. And um, we last left off uh, right here, actually. Uh, I think I was about to go study and go to bed. I got a party or something to uh, prepare. And these guys uh, seem more than happy to help. Um, <clears throat> If you hear me uh, in the background drinking um, anything, it's it's just green tea. Uh, I <laughs> just came back from picking up and shoveling and moving all this snow outside my house. I really, 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 really hate snow. I really do. I can't believe it. You know, um, and I thought it would be easier. I thought it would be. I thought I would be in here earlier to uh, do this because uh, we have one of those um, plug-in um, snow power shovel things, you know, that, uh, that we got recently. And I plugged that in thinking, oh, this is going to be a breeze. I don't have to, like, hurt my back, bend my back over or anything like that. And it sucked. It wasn't even that good. It really wasn't. It was a ripoff, so I'm pretty upset about that. And... Uh, you know, but uh, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be outside. The, the snow was um, still very soft. It's just that, you know, it's, just, it, it's still snow. I hate it. I mean, I, you guys might like it. I don't. I like warm weather so much more than that. Anyway, let's go ahead and, and let's, let's do this thing. Let's just get this started. As soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Kind of like how I'm feeling right now. Ugh. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics book, knowing that no matter how tired I was, I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at last. The words on the page scrambled in my mind as I read through them, but after two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. Equations. Ugh. <laughs> oh, I hate math. Finally, I decided to change into my pajamas and head to bed. Today was a long day and I needed the rest. Yes, yeah, sure was. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three days in, of surprises in a row would kill me. <laughs> oh boy. With that thought in mind, I drifted I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> oh <laughs> You fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! Oh my, I wonder who that is. What a wonderful voice actor that was. <laughs> so stupid! Ugh. That's me, guys. That's my voice. Oh, man. I wasn't even ready for it, actually. Uh, uh, startled me a little bit. Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up. Oh, my. I'm pretty sure it's not like that. And I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it. <laughs> why is this so? Why is why is this so funny? Hearing it like this, <laughs> this character, man. What was I thinking? Voicing him like this? Whatever. Let her go. Matthew, come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man. Uh. <laughs> like you scare me, Sam. Come on. Take one step. I dare you. Serious business about to happen, guys. Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix! Oh, that's his name, right? And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Yeah, man, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so weird responding to my own character's lines. <laughs> what the heck, man? Oh my goodness. Suddenly, I pulled myself, I felt myself pulled to one side and arms wrapped around my body pro protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Huh? Eric? 
As I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into black as the arms around me rocked me comfortably. F slowly, though, my eyes fluttered open and I looked up at the person holding me. Did Damien? I stared into the eyes of Damien. <laughs> okay. His eyes... No, his... <laughs> okay. <clears throat> His face was painted with worry and concern, and I knew that he must have seen my dream. Hmm. Why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? Oh my, I wonder. Ah! You can't control your dreams. Hmm. Well, well, I guess you're right. Although, the question now is, uh, how the heck do I even have a dream about someone I haven't even met yet? You know? Was like a premonition or something. Are you okay? It's okay as like as okay as I'm gonna be, I guess. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. What time is it? It's nine a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well. Oh, you can't control your mind reading. No, not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Oh, he's still a level one mind reader. Isn't that isn't that sweet? Got to level up, son. EXP, go fight some monsters. Or whatever. Um, or fuse some units. Uh, if you play Brave Frontier, I guess. Is everything alright? Huh? Yeah, I'm alright. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yes, I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides... We'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Oh, ain't that nice. Oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. I could use some, move, some, some mood. I could use some food right now. Maybe some bacon, eggs. Sausages! <laughs> why did I say it like that? It was embarrassing to see the damsel in to be the damsel in distress once again. But I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just cur courtesy or, or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. Like some people I know. Alright. The two boys led me back to the dining room, where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. Ha! <laughs> Sweet! I wanted bacon and eggs and I got bacon and eggs! Man, I want bacon and eggs for real, though, right now. Like, I could do it. I'm trying to lay off the pork, though. Like, I mean, I diet reasons. Not that I'm fat or anything, okay? I'm just big boned. Okay, I'm not big boned either. I'm actually kind of slim. It's, you know, you can't have bacon all the time. It's whatever. Anyway! But <laughs> the smell wafted into the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. Okay, thanks, Jonah. Scott? <laughs> oh, man, I just never gonna let that down. I know some of these people. It's great. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. The feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Who's that? Morning. You alright? Yeah, man. It's all good. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! Mm. It's always Sam. In the morning, in the evening, always with the yelling. There's no need to yell, Sam! <laughs> I think I'm getting a headache. Because of outside. Oh no. You're yelling too! <laughs> Don't argue with me! <laughs> look at the look on his face. Like he knows he's just messing with him. <laughs> From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples and 
rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at that. Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Oh, well, look at this dude's face. You think you're something special, huh? You think you fancy? Oh, you fancy, huh? Because you got a castle. Well, screw that. No big deal. So what? You got a castle? Like whatever, man. This is in England. Shoot. I'm so mad you got a castle. And wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> whatever. Uh, soon James and Damien appeared, hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. Oh my goodness, these people know my lifestyle. They place the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Where's Matthew? Mmm, my favorite. Your favorite? Aren't you from the demon world? Is that like a common thing to eat over there? An eggs, bacon, you know, cinnamon toast crunch? Finally. What? Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. You <laughs> Random plug of the opening theme song. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring, ushering me to pull it from my pocket and answer. Ah, who are you? It's probably, um, the uh, Suzu again. Hello? Hey, That's good Naomi. morning. Hey, what's yes, going on? Who's at your door right now? Together with Suzu again. <laughs> I'm never going to let that go. All right. <laughs> I'm right on cue. There was a knockout. Oh, frick. They're at the door. <laughs> oh, no. This is the worst time for him to show up. Right on cue, there was a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were there. I'll get it. No! No, I was just asking where you were. Let's not have this happen. My heart quickly jumped to pound it from... Uh, my heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby and, he heard, and, he'd, and he'd get to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out to the dining room. No! As I passed through the archway between the dining room and lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before the words could reach his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. F. Uh, um... Well, I mean... Why is he surprised? He knew someone was at the door. What, because they're, they're cute girls? Is that why? Or whatever. Look at Susie. She's looking at her face. She's like, huh. So this happened. <laughs> and Naomi is like, <laughs> they don't even know how to, <laughs> they have like the, the most blank, the, the blankest faces right now. Oh man, the world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Hi? That's all you got to say, man? I could not believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week had already been bad enough! Well, there goes my third straight day of BS. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. <laughs> they just do the ellipsy war. Um. Um. Suzu, let me explain. What's going on here? Yeah, about that. Oh. At the door, Matthew. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Uh, okay, this is obviously bad choices, all of them. They're visitors. They're in your head! <laughs> I can, I cannot pick this answer, like, ever. They're in your head! It's, no, come on. It's, they're brothers! Um, well, speaking of my head... My head hurts right now. All right, I'm gonna try to get through this. What should I pick? What should I pick? I don't know. They're in your head is a hell no answer. 
They're my brothers. No, they're not. They've known me ever since I was kids. We were kids in school. They're not gonna fall for that. All right, visitors. Then why did one of them open the door? Because they're nice visitors. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. We. Yeah. Um. It was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. I felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. James smiling at James. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. What do you mean everything? I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. You know, this person, Mika Anderson, she gets me. I feel like we're very similar. Like, I'll, I'll respond to what's going on in the game, and she'll respond exactly the same way. I feel like... I feel like... Like a... Like we got a persona situation going on here. Like, she is me, and I am her. Interesting. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi, and sat across from their confused gazes. Oh, by the way, I'm also noticing I'm constantly switching up my pronunciation for Naomi? Naomi and Naomi. I don't know which one I want to pick. Whatever, I'll just go with it. As Naomi and Suzu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! I know, I know, it's so good. Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their mind for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and... Naomi, I'm doing it again. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys that stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Uh, yeah. Well, you see, um... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi. Naomi now? Oh, wow. Naomi? Naomi and Naomi. Naomi and Suzu. Oh, my God. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather oh, really? to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. Yeah, it does make sense. <laughs> uh, a huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for. It. You gotta stop calling me princess, dude. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work, so she lets us wear casual clothes. That's a great excuse, man, just not with that expression. Looks like you just made it up. Could you try a little bit harder to lie? Yeah, something like that. Would you please get on with the charade? Like, make at least make it look like they're not lying. Damn! We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Ah, <sighs> That'd be nice. I can't wait for the weekend to begin. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Oh man, I like this Susie person already. Gamer girls are sweet. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. Um... I guess I can do that. Sure, why not? There's an arcade?! <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. 
This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Well, ain't that nice? Seriously? Yeah, man, seriously, he's supposed to be my servants. Could you act like it a little bit more? Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Decision time! Activate! Um, should I stay in the house and help? That sounds boring, and I just love house chores. I love it, can't you tell? Ah! Especially after what I did this morning. Or I can go out with Suzu and Naomi. I kind of want to go out with them. Especially you. you know, nah. I just want to play video games. Like I'm doing right now. Let's Are do you that. sure? Yeah, man, let's do it. I'm sure. I'll trust these guys to be able to work everything out. Thank you for trusting us, miss. We'll have everything done for you by the time you return home. You know Alright, we'll wait here while you go get your things. Hmm. Okay, sure. I was strangely relieved to know that everything was going to be okay while I was gone from the house. I trusted the guys enough to do everything they could for this house party, so my mind focused itself on focused itself on hanging out with my friends. Eventually, I was out the door, walking out Naomi's car with I did again, with Naomi's car with Naomi and Suzu. Suzu get grabbed the entire back seat as I took the passenger side. Naomi started the car and drove off towards the city. Oh, they have the same car as my dad! I guess... I guess that's, you know, a really good model nowadays. It was nice driving out with my friends. After all that had happened, it was good to just go out and forget my troubles. Well, since we got you out of the house, we might as well go to the mall and walk around a bit. We did just eat breakfast after all. I do not like going to the mall just to walk around, by the way. Come on, man. I'm going to the mall, we need to buy something. Just saying. Yeah, that was a good meal though. Could have had more flavor in my opinion. Oh Lord have mercy. Spicy stuff again? You're funny. Suzu, you eat chili peppers when you're bored. Everything you eat always needs more flavor. That says a little bit too much, don't you think, Suzu? <laughs> Look at her face, she's like, yeah, wild side, activate. <laughs> You need to teach me, Suzu. I still can't get over that, Suzu. You know what? I've not picked a single Suzu-centric answer yet. And I like Suzu a lot, so... You know... Yeah, let's... You need to teach me, Suzu. Teach you me, just Suzu! You need to eat spicy food all the time. You gotta tame your mouth. Tame your mouth? Really, <laughs> Suzu? Yeah, tame your mouth. <laughs> okay, 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 I'm just playing. <clears throat> just playing. That wasn't um, meant to mean anything else besides peppers. I swear. <clears throat> okay, next. Sounds difficult. Anyways, after the mall, what do you want to do? We could go to the Pink Lady Cafe and chill out with Kay. I'm sure she'd love the company. Okay. But we have to stop by the arcade. They have this new game out called Orion. You get to control this guy named Isaku, and you're part of the rebel forces, and you get to shoot things, and there's robots, and- Oh my god, Orion? Michaela Laws, yo. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, um, there's supposed to be this, um, I think it's, I don't know if it's a visual novel game. Yeah, it's a visual novel game. It's called Orion. And, um, it's, I don't know when it's coming out, but it, 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 the concept sounds pretty cool. Um, I would just go on uh, Tumblr and ask uh, her about it. Um, see, and the art's amazing, actually. But, um, <clears throat> anyway, let's, let's just keep on going. Sheesh, we get it, Suzu, we get it. We'll go to the arcade. Why are you mad? Why are you mad? We're just going to the arcade. Look at her, she loves games. I love games. I love games, I'm just saying. <clears throat> Which one first though? You know how popular Kay is. She'll get she'll be swamped with customers later in the day. Who is Kay? I'd rather go in the late afternoon. She has better options during the last hour of the cafe. But I have my party. So basically after the arcade? 
<laughs> you figured me out so quickly, Patterson. What did I tell you about using my last name? What's wrong with just using your last name? I know people who say my full name. I don't know why they do that. Like the whole thing. They say the whole name every time they see me. The whole thing. They even add the the VA part. You know, that's not really part of my name. It just means voice actor on Tumblr. You know, like I like on Tumblr or my Twitter, you know, it's James Brown Jr. VA. It means, hey, I am also doing the voice thing. And they say the whole thing. Or they say va. You know, they think they're so clever. They're, they're not. They're not. <clears throat> I keep on going off on a tangent. Sorry, guys. Well, let's go to... Uh-oh. I have to make a choice again. I really... I like coffee and stuff, I guess. But, man, arcade. Let's do this. Let's hang out with Suzu. So we headed to the mall and walked around for a good amount of time before driving out to the Moonfall <laughs> Arcade. <laughs> Another thing that's coming out soon. I mean, I don't know when it's coming out actually, but uh, it's... By the way guys, another plug! Sarah from Entertainment doing another visual novel called Moonfall. So, if you like this, you're probably gonna like Moonfall, just saying. Um, so I will go to Sarah from Entertainment's Tumblr to find out more information about it. I'm sure they have something going on about it. <clears throat> as weird as the name sounded, the arcade was one of the best arcades in the city. Kids and teenagers lined the games, w watching the players at the consoles as they anxiously waited to have their turn. What kind of games did I used to play in the arcades? Mostly fighting games, like Street Fighter or Soul Calibur. What else? What else? Um, Tekken, Marvel vs. Capcom. I was all about them fighters, yo. Um, oh yeah, DDR. I sucked at that, but whatever. Don't judge me. Oh, oh, there it is, there it is! Where's what? Susan grabbed Naomi and me by the hands before dragging us to a section of the arcade where a bunch of kids had gathered in awe and excitement. In the middle of the crowd was a large game with two joystick platforms and a screen that flashed the name of Orion every other second. I think someone like a seizure or something. In the background of the screen, a holographic play field glimmered before A holographic play field? Like, uh... Like Yu-Gi-Oh? Like the Yu-Gi-Oh cartoon? I don't know. A holographic play field glimmered before us, revealing a neo-futuristic battlefield and an army bo an enemy robot charging right at the camera! This is the game you were excited about? Why you sound so s- oh. mm. Alright, it looks really cool! That's right! Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna play it so hard, I'll beat the game in one shot! Yeah, you play that game so hard. Let's go. Suzu smirked and looked at me, hoping that I would join her as I ca usually did for partner games. I looked to Naomi, who merely rolled her eyes, crossed her arms, and gave me the okay nod. Like, I need your permission or something. I don't know what's going on. You know... I... Why does, you know, if I make a decision for one person, the other one gets really upset? Like, come on. It's not even... It's not even that that big of a deal. Whatever. I grinned before nodding to Suzu, who cheered in joy. Look how ready she did. She's ready to rock, man. Oh, you know what? Now I remember, um... What's it called? Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear. Also that. Those are also fun games if you haven't played them yet. And Smash Brothers. That wasn't in an arcade, but, um... Love Smash Brothers. Still play that game. Uh, yeah. Woohoo! Alright, let's do this! <laughs> yeah, she's cool. It took us a good half hour before we were able to step up to the platforms. The point of the game was to beat the government and restore freedom to the general public. Hmm. We played the game as... We played as rebels in the robot, and uh, the game quickly became a smash and bash game versus multiple enemy, enemy robots. Playing with Suzu was always an adventure. We both knew what our strengths and weaknesses were, so it was easy to collaborate with each other. It wasn't long before we got into the swing of the game and were beating enemies like crazy. By the time we got to the boss, we were unstoppable. Yo, she has red eyes? Hmm. Nice. It was so refreshing to beat the boss and put our three-letter code names into the high scores list. And that is how you game. We are unstoppable, Anderson. Yeah, we are. Suzu gave me a large smile, which made me smile back. It was happy to be able to hang out and have fun with my friends like this. I felt free from worries and res or responsibilities. It was something I loved. 
We eventually lost track of the time and wound up staying longer than we expected, making us unable to stop at the cafe before going home to dress for the horse woman party. God damn it. Now Naomi's gonna be upset about that. So we drove back. Naomi and Suzu picked up clothes and other necessities from their houses before driving back to the mansion. The hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party, knowing my dad he invited his business partners partners and executives for the Anderson Company to show me off. What is it's not is this a business meeting or what? Ah no ah, I don't want to be shown off like I'm some prospective CEO. Which is exactly what he has on his mind. I stood in front of the mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party? Not really. But at the same time, it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was my chance where I could see my parents as a woman. It was, it was my test to see if I was really ready to live on my own. It's woman time. Let's go. Well, not truly alone. I had the incubi to thank, but even so, I didn't have any... I didn't have my dad guiding me or my mom helping me through the living room. Through the living alone. I mean, a knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Sounds like you're still eating, you're, you're eating something. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look uh -oh. fine, Anderson. Just come on out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that. My stomach's growling, oh my god. I'm hungry. Gotta go eat. As soon as I'm done with this. <clears throat> All right. Oh, that's cute. She's just like. She's just being. She's just being her. That's that's nice though. I like that. As soon as I. Oh wow. Yo. Hey. As soon as I drop, as soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as Naomi and Suzu's faces turned from smiles to complete awestruck stares. W what? Dude, you look hot. Thanks. Yeah, you look amazing. Where did you get that dress? I had it for a while. I just never had the chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. You know, I gotta say, I look really good in that dress. Of course, I'm not surprised I look good in anything. Well, almost anything. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Look at these guys, all fresh to death and deaf to fresh. I stepped out of my room and locked the, uh, and closed my bedroom door behind me. As I walked down the hall to, to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the, at the bottom, all dressed to the nines as proper servants. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Yeah... They sure do. Where did they get the clothes, though? I don't remember giving them money. Oh, yeah, they're incubi. <laughs> yeah. I was slightly taken aback on how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of the perfect gentleman, even Sam. I slowly began to climb down the steps with Suzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time, like knights waiting for their princess. <laughs> I felt my face slightly flush, but I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached for the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down that final step, smiling. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Oh my. Thank you. So, are you prepared for tonight? What do you think? As good as I'll ever be. Oh, that's the answer for that. As ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it was, more than what it was, and and I had done all I could to prepare for it. Now it was all up to fate. Oh, oh! I'm so hungry. Oh my god! Did you guys hear that? Oh no! I should take a break. <coughs> Let me drink this tea first. Ah! Oh, I really should edit that out. I, I don't feel like it. I'm lazy. Ah, uh, guy, you should guys should send send me food. That's what you guys should do, so I can eat while I'm uh, playing this game. Actually, you know, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Actually, you know what? Actually, do that. 
<laughs> Alright, anyways, the other boy smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. The aura of hatred and saltiness and... Oh, I hate my grandfather. I hate my dad. Rah, rah, rah. Just got daddy issues, man. <clears throat> Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the double doors wide open, wide open to re... Wow. Okay. Uh, to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. I can't read for some reason today. Or any day, apparently. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. Yeah, I didn't know either. It was probably overlooked. Besides, who would deny good service? You're not gonna question anything? You just... You just gonna just accept the situation? Like, dude. I was... A com I was you see? I was completely shocked, too. My parents didn't question the boys. They didn't even ask for verification or anything. I walked, I looked to the boys and noticed Sam and Eric staring intently at my parents. Were they using their powers on them? They had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I <laughs> guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. Is that how you, wow, they're things to you. Okay. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? I don't like you! Ever! Right, anyways, my mother quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug. Well, look, she looks nice too. What she's wearing? Uh oh, wait, wait, back up, back up, James. That's her mom. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. Oh, okay, and she smells good too. Okay. <laughs> it had only been a couple of days, but living away from the others who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. Oh, gorgeous! You look so lovely, David. Look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. I looked to my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. Ah, <sighs> not surprised. I stood my ground, waiting for him to look at me. When he did, he let out a small he let a small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. Why thank you, jerk. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded hard in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me? On his own accord? My mother was grinning ear to ear at his words. I was beyond speechless. Does this guy never give compliments? Is that how bad this situation is? Like, that is, that's something wrong with that. Thank you, Daddy. However, his cold face quickly returned as he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? What do you, what do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming tonight. Really? Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. <laughs> I don't want to be CEO. I don't want to be CEO, Dad. You're not listening. You're not listening. This dude, man, he keeps on pushing this thing on me. My potential? To become the nerve. CEO of the company. I knew it! No! I knew it! Something was off about tonight, and now this party had become much more than I had anticipated. I gulped silently, but I nodded in response. I looked at the incubi, but they were continuing to be my servants for my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Naomi and Suzu raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I let, out a, I let out a small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As if time zoomed forward, all of a sudden, the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in informal, in, in, <laughs> men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. Why do I have the feeling I'm going to have more surprises? I shook my hands with many officials and executive members, putting on the professional face my dad trained me to have. I'm being very fake right now, it feels like. I felt overwhelmed, but I hit it, but I hit it well behind a smile and a handshake. Many asked me questions. I tried my best to reply as maturely as possible. I had to remember. Say what they want to hear, not what you want to say. Say what they want to say. Anyway. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? <laughs> uh, 
Doing pretty good, actually. I'm so sorry about your grandfather passing away. It really hit all of us hard. Uh, thank you for Do your you condolences. Have college plans? Pfft, college, I don't need that. Uh, yes, I do! <laughs> I felt like the questions came up one after another. It was tough to answer some of them because they weren't about me. They were about the company! What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? I don't know! I'm 18! It's hard to say. I'm not an executive or anything. Well, I guess it depends on who what runs it. What do you think of the philanthropic policy the company has? Uh, I do remember something about this. I... Well, no, actually. I just remember about the, the, uh, the charity thing. Uh, it's a policy that reflects my own values, I guess. Oh my god. Do you think the company These are all generic answers. Choice? Like, you know, the answers you would give to a reporter snooping around. Do you think the company should expand from just toys? What? No! I don't think that makes any sense. Eventually, the questions stopped and I was back to being myself. Naomi and Suzu were mingling in the crowds and the Incubi were doing their jobs. So I was all alone in a room full of strangers. Oh my god, I need to get something to eat. What the heck? It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't being questioned left and right anymore. Suddenly, though, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I didn't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Mm-hmm, who's this? This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Oh. So we got another potential, uh, guy here. With my mother stood a man who looked only a couple of years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Is that his hair? Hey, yo, what's going on? Um... Sure. As I placed my hand in his, he raised it to his lips and kissed over my knuckles. Oh, this guy, isn't he just a gentleman? I felt my face burn slightly at his gesture. Andrew smiled at me before raising my hand, releasing my hand. I'm honored to be invited here. Yeah, you know, hey, why not? Everyone else I don't want is here. And you actually seem nicer than them. My mother smiled at both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Yeah. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh, proper, his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Me? Oh, why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's that's just how I do, you know, work for charity and all that. Not that she needs it, she's filthy rich. Look at that dress. Oh wow, I didn't know how he looked how he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I l <laughs> Wow. I really am starving. I looked to Andrew, who had, kind, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. Oh, here he goes. Oh, <laughs> I felt someone walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Jared's son. Oh, Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my grandfather, with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break at the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. I feel like he said that just to make me, like, be antagonistic towards him, you know? Like, oh, he's the enemy, he's trying to take the company from me! I don't care, man. I stared at Andrew. This guy wanted to take my grandfather's place as, as CEO? I wanted the vice. I thought the vice wanted the, wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm Thank merely you. testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. 
No, you're not. You're trying to intimidate him. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. <laughs> you know, I wonder if when he was a kid, if he was like this. You know? I don't know. I always wonder if, like, why people act a certain way towards other people when they probably were in that same situation when they were younger. You'd think they'd learn from it. If you'll excuse me. Hmm. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. Okay, so should I follow him or stay put? Uh, I actually do feel bad for him, though. I probably should make sure he isn't sad or whatever. I'll follow him. I quickly followed Andrew, wanting to be sure he was alright. I felt a little embarrassed that my dad put him on the spot like that. Yeah, that was messed up, bro. I had to apologize. Oh, it looks nice outside. I, wa I wound up outside. The stars practically danced on the grass as we stood in the backyard of the mansion. It had been my first time in years being out there, but my thoughts weren't on the nostalgia. Hey, Andrew? Aw, oh, dude, he's just... He's just done. He's done for the evening. He's ready to go home. Oh, sorry, man. That's just... You know I, you know my father. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Andrew turned to me in surprise. However, his face was completely red in both embarrassment and humiliation. I felt terrible. Oh, I am... Um, I know that feel. I didn't see you or hear you following. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I should be the one to apologize. What for? You didn't do anything wrong. Uh, for that jerk of a father I have. I mean, for the way dad, my dad behaved. He shouldn't have been so... Oh no, no, it's fine. I mean, I should have expected it and been more prepared. <laughs> hmm. Andrew rubbed the back of his neck and gave a goofy grin. It was intriguing. Seeing Andrew's professional side and then seeing a goofy smile away from everyone. Yeah, he seems like just a goofball. Slash nerd. Still, I'm sorry for that. It's not a problem, really, but thank you. We both smiled at each other before I reached my hand out to him. He tilted his hand and his tilt he tilted his head and raised an eyebrow in confusion. James. My name is James. Oh boy. In understanding, his smile returned before he took my hand gently and shook it. I apologize, everybody. I am I starving or something? <laughs> am I about to die from hunger? Oh my goodness, I really hope this Yeti didn't pick it up to uh too much. Not that I can do anything about it now. And I'm, all, I'm almost out of tea. <clears throat> so yeah. In understanding, his face returned before we took my hand gently and shook it. That's a pretty name. I'm happy to know it now. Nah, it's not that nice. It's actually a pretty generic name. I have to disagree with you. It's much better than Andrew. I mean, who names their kid Andrew? That's... It's not like it's an awful name, it's actually a common name too, I think. A lot of people do. But how about Axel or Ace? Something cool like that. I'm trying to sound like an anime character now. Come on, dude. Axel, Ace. I couldn't help but laugh at him. He was pretty chill for a guy who was supposed to be a vice chairman's son. He grinned and laughed along with me. I don't know why, but I felt warm. Whether it was almost non-existent. Whether it was almost the non-existent breeze or the situation we found ourselves in, it felt... nice. Lewis. Oh, Lord have mercy, this man again. Oh, he said he called him by his last name, too. <laughs> oh, and just like that, the feeling had vanished. Thanks, Dad! We both turned to see my dad at the doors of the mansion, staring at Andrew with almost a deadly glare. Andrew straightened up, trying to maintain trying to maintain a business posture. Yes, sir? Your limo is in the front. The driver has requested that you return home. Now. Oh, all right. More like you Thank did. Thank you, sir. Wow. Andrew quickly nodded to me before speeding back into the mansion to leave. As I took a step to follow, my dad stepped in front of me. Dad. I don't want to hear it. Do not become friendly with him. He wants to take the company away from us. 
You have no reason to be friends with him. What's with this us, dude? Ah, I came with this ulterior motives with you, man. Before I could retort, my dad turned away and walked back inside, muttering about how the party was nearing an end. I sighed and returned to the, and entered the house as well, waiting, wanting for the party to end immediately. Eventually, only Suzu, Naomi, my parents, and the Incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up, the, I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. Yeah, I did everything you wanted, like a obedient little girl. That makes you proud. Oh, oh, thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. Ah, again with that crap. Stop it, man. Oh, right. All right, your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Dude, he's not even in the same house as me. He's still trying to rule over me. Go away! Ah, uh, oh, right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. <laughs> yeah, it was... It was something. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. All right? All right, sweet. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I kind of... I need to see if I can find this outfit. What is it? Jeans? Just a green jacket thing? Well, I don't know about the green jacket. Maybe a different color and just a shirt? A dress shirt, maybe? I'll go... I don't know. Figure that out. Figure that out later, guys! We'll figure that out later. I'm gonna cosplay as dressed up Suzu, if that's what that is. All right. Not really. I don't cosplay. Just clothes, though. I can pull that off. All right. See ya! Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do. All four of my remaining guests left the building. All but my dad waving back to me. With the last of the guests alone, I sighed and took I sighed and sat on and sat on the staircase, exhausted. Ugh, that was tiring. You know, I'm tired, and I'm the one playing the game. I'm tired of that mess, man. Like he needs to go get a grip. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Shut up, Sam. Give her a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. I don't like you. Just just pulling that off. Just saying that right now. Sundere attitude issues. Whatever. She handled herself the best she could. Why, thank you, Jonah Scott. I mean, Damien. For... As expected, princess. Princess again. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. Cool. Let's do that. <laughs> you mad, bro? Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Sweet. Ho ho ho! Oh, it frick. Long to find you little shits after all. Uh oh. We got a surprise guest. Who is this? Who is this guy? I felt a hot shudder run down my spine. The voice from my dreams echoed in through the air and into my ears. I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure about that? Are you sure? <laughs> Are you really sure? <laughs> Why did I voice him like that? Ugh. Oh boy, he's the bad guy. All of us shot our heads towards the doors, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would never, I would have never expected to see. Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold piercing into mine, roughened up clothes and a pistol in his hand. I saw a monster. Oh my. Look at his hips go! <laughs> <clears throat> I covered my mouth not to scream at the, at the sight. Dried blood covered the bandana around his neck as he smirked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man with a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? Oh, Lord. I hoped you would, you piece of... So all of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger! Oh, no! I... Oh! 
guns! Bad! We all gasped and shocked instinctively, expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What? What the fuck? <laughs> like I didn't know what happened. These are my lines. Yeah, so if you haven't figured it out yet, that's the character I play. <sighs> isn't, he so, so, isn't he so cool? Yeah! I'm completely biased, by the way, on this. He's so awesome, though. Anyway, that pistol, which should have been a headshot, ended with a <laughs> headshot, boom, headshot, ended with a loud but empty blank shot. Oh, so not boom headshot, boom blank shot? Okay, gotcha. The, the pistol echoed its pen. Its, why can't I read? The pistol echoed. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over again in aggravation. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? Uh oh, he's mad. This place is protected. I like how he just knew. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal. <laughs> he's still protecting it from hellborn magic. He still is like what? Well, he's not. He's not too happy hearing that. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Ah! <laughs> You mad, bro? <laughs> oh, man. Ah! <laughs> the man growled and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. Stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into a black flame that faded into the air. Hmm. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Malix. That was his name. His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malik's did. This place is protected by magic? <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables Hellborn magic. So... I can't... I mean, I... <laughs> so Malix can't use his powers. But the Incubi can? Okay. Malix's face grew to that of extreme anger, his fist tightening as if he was crushing a stress ball. And what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Probably the fact that I don't have powers. I mean, Malix doesn't have powers. <laughs> out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys with no power. Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Fuck off! Malik sl <laughs> Malik suddenly laughed wildly, staring at me in disbelief. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Who let the bitch out of her cage? What is this? A reverse harem or something? <laughs> oh man, he is very, uh... He ain't taking me seriously at all! Malix grinned at me evilly, walking close to me. Ah! Run! <laughs> no! All of a sudden, I felt my hand grab, grip my hair and pull it back, forcing me to cry out and stare up at Malix. His eyes bore into mine as he cackled in my face. Hey! Let her go! Yeah, let me go, Sam, man. Eric! Oh. Within mere seconds, Sam had punched Malix square in the jaw forcing him to let my hair go. As he, as I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malix and back in, the, in their group. Come on, Sam. You and me. Right here. Let's go. Come on, asswipe. Dragon Ball Z fighting, let's go. However, before we, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a firm grip on Malix's shoulder. That's enough, Malix. Ooh, I like her voice. It's almost as gritty as mine. What? I mean, Malix's. Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? <laughs> yeah, who do you think you're speaking the to? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Hmm. Not now? Look how surprised he is. <laughs> it's like, uh uh, no, I want to do it now. Look at his face. I'm like, but I want to kill them now. <laughs> Look at his face. Anyway. I stared at the 
I stared as the girl spoke down at Malik. Spoke down? Damn. Son, she's, uh... She ain't afraid of him at all. <laughs> she looked the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malik's, or for me. There's five of them, and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. We shoot everyone! Think! If we shoot everyone, <laughs> we'll be hunted. And it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> what a lovely odd couple. The two grouted each other. They could have if they could have used their magic, I could see I could sense that the fire would glow from under their teeth. Malix grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait for the boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but laugh at his laugh, yo. Then Malix turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside! I dare you! <laughs> you like laughing a lot! Just saying! With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys so to quickly turn to, to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? No, I'm not alright! Yeah, why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. Great, so it's your fault. Idiots. Uh, should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. It, me it messed up my nice, clean house. N no. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malik's left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malix, was he a demon? Probably. That son of a bitch is not. Oh, a demon. oh yeah, it's not as right. He's a devil. <laughs> you know, for someone who's voiced in this game, I have zero idea what's going on. It feels like. I don't know. That's probably bad. Well, uh, good and bad. Good because it's almost like I'm playing the game like a, uh, you know like one of you guys it's, it, you know it doesn't know what's going on so um, yeah let's keep on going a devil there's a difference <laughs> news to me yes demons come from a different plane of existence called the abyssal planes hmm devils however come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know it's hell despite us not being human we are very different creatures we actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. This is, very all, this is all very knowledgeable... Made knowledgeable. This is all very good information, but, uh... I feel like this is going to be important somehow in the future. I just don't know. I just don't, I just don't know how. This is all so confusing. Devils. Demons and devil and magic. Oh my! Yeah, I, all existed and I happened to land in the middle of it. What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Oh, well, isn't that nice? Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. Wow, when was anyone gonna let me know about this? Damien! You... He knew. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises, and this one took the cake in being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <sighs> I'm gonna kick his ass right now. 
Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. What about going outside? Won't he? Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Oh, okay. Well, I can use Taekwondo and be like, and kick him in the teeth. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Yes, I do knew Taekwondo. I forgot to use it on you earlier. Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malix. Oh, by the way, I just realized he remembered. Anyway, <laughs> you remembered I knew Taekwondo. I'm just messing around. Still, I could not help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. The boys were safe to here to train and become stronger, but what if Malix did the same? Of course. Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words of the incubi, I felt like a target or I felt like a target is something I'd never be able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did all of this even happen? Should I really meddle with the situation? They are only staying until after they defeat Malix. That's right. They said they'd only stay until after they defeated Malix. After that, my life would go back to normal. Temporary insanity, as Kay would say. Who is Kay? I would have found out if I went to the... Went to the cafe. But I wanted to play video games with Suzu. <sighs> Anyways. The question was... <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me. The question was then, what would I would I want them to leave? As my, my as my life went back to normal, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. I'd get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents and only my Fr with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. Enough. Let's just sleep and deal with tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I would be ready for it. I promise to be with you forever. Who's that? You're so important to me. Who is that? I swear I'll give my life to you. What? Please, let me love you. I know that's the Incubi, I just don't know who those other voices were. I'll be by your side, always. Sure you will. I can't imagine living without you. What is this, more premonitions? I want to be with you. I love you. I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices in, of my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. Well, I think this is as good as a time as any to take a break. Because apparently I'm starving. I think I'm going to make some bacon and eggs and potatoes and molasses. No, not really. And something. It's already afternoon, though. Maybe a sandwich. Anyways, I'm done for now, guys. I'm going to take a break, and I'll do another one of these. And, um, and all that stuff. So, I uh, hope you had fun. Um, if you liked everything you see here, go ahead and post a comment, like, subscribe. You know the deal. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube. And, uh, if you haven't had a chance to, you should go uh, to the link uh, I'm in the description and uh, download the game. It's free. Why not? Great voice acting and everything, especially for my character, Malix. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think I'm going to stop for now. Um, and um, I'll see you again later. Bye. Take care. And make sure you go get something to eat. Okay? All right. Stay warm out there, guys.